Here's the breadboard with the usual tangle of jumper wires. In the video to follow, I have tidied it up using solid core wire stripped back. Here's our breadboard, much neater, I think you'll agree. So we covered the LDR. When lights on it, it activates the LED on off. And we can also activate a motor with it. Okay, let's look at the circuit board in a bit more detail. Uh, this is the LDR. This is resistor, 2.2K. This is our transistor, which will activate the coil on the relay with a diode there. So when it's covered, it's not activated. There's zero volts going to the um, transistor, and so the coil isn't activated on the relay. When we take the cover off, we can see now there's a voltage going to the transistor, which again allows current to flow through the relay and turns the LED on. So let's look at the circuit diagram. Here we have the voltage divider part of the circuit. The LDR is R1 and R2 is 2.2K. Next we have the transistor. It is NPN type S8050. We have the base, the collector, and the emitter. This is the relay, and just assume at the moment the LDR is in darkness. The LED is connected via the common and normally open contacts in the relay, so no current is flowing through the LED, through the LED so it is off. This is the relay coil, and when it is activated, it will switch the contacts over from common to normally open. This diode protects the transistor from the brief high voltage produced when the relay coil is switched off. So how does it work? The voltage out from the voltage divider part goes to the base of the transistor. When the LDR is in darkness, the V-out is close to zero. When the LDR is in light, the V-out is around 2.5 volts. So if the voltage different across the base to ground is greater than 0 0.7, and we have sufficient current, in this case around 2.5 milliamps, the transistor is turned on and allows current to flow through the collector and emitter to ground. And so the coil in the relay is activated, which switches the contacts here from normally closed to normally open and allows current to flow through the LED or the motor as seen earlier. You can see that I have the relay or load connected on the collector side of the transistor. It is particularly important what side of the transistor the relay is connected to, and I've learned this the hard way. If it is on the emitter side, the voltage drop across it is not enough to activate the relay coil. I won't pretend to fully understand why, but when a transistor is fully on or saturated, the voltage across the collector emitter is almost zero. So why not use an Arduino to turn on or off a motor? Well, the voltage output from Arduino is only 5 volts, and the maximum current is only 40 milliamps. We could use Arduino to energize the relay coil, however, it does at expense. Arduino costs around 20 euros, whereas the, trans the transistor is no more than one or two cent. The Arduino is going to take up a lot more space, and if our application is in a less than an ideal environment, outdoors for example, or even in a humid location, we could run into trouble. 